everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I like to talk about books and today I'm going to be talking about 10 thriller books that you can't put down. I have been feeling so slumpy lately. I have just not been super in the mood to read. And when I'm not in the mood to read, the thing I usually turn to is either a thriller or a romance book. So I've just been thinking recently about all the thriller books that I've read that have just really been able to get me out of a slump because they're just so good. You just can't put them down. They're so fast paced. You're so interested in them and you just don't want to stop. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to make a video and share my favorite thriller books that I was not able to put down that I think you also won't be able to put down in case anyone else out there is feeling slumpy, looking for a thriller to get back into reading a little bit. And then maybe I'll do a romance version of this later on if that's something you're also interested in. But I just think a fast paced thriller is one of the best ways to read. It is just so fun. It's so addictive when you can't put a book down because you just need to know what's happening. It's a great time. With that being said, with that being said, I'm going to be going over my 10 favorite thrillers that I've read that I haven't been able to put down in no particular order, just sort of random. First, I'm going to start with my tried and true recommendation. If you watch my videos, you've seen me talk about this book a lot, and that is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I just love this thriller so much. I read this all in one sitting the day that I first read it, and it is just so much fun. So this book follows a girl who's on her way back home from college. She gets stuck in a snowstorm and has to stop at a rest stop. And when she gets there, there are a couple other people that she's there with. She goes outside to try to make a phone call. She's like, you know, just wandering around a little bit and she sees what she thinks might be a child in the back of a van. So then she's like, oh shoot, who are these people that I'm stuck in this rest stop with? Are they dangerous? Have they taken this child? Whose van is this? Should I be afraid for my own life? And then how do I get out of this bad situation? And it is so, so fun. It all takes place over the course of that snowstorm stuck at that rest stop. And it is so intense. It is so fast paced. The stakes feel so high because the whole time you're just like, oh my gosh, this girl's got to get out of here. <laughs> I just found it super fun. I also love a book with like a snowy atmosphere when there's some kind of disaster that you can't get out of. So highly, highly, highly recommend this one. It's one of my favorite thrillers of all time. Sort of similar to the same reasons that I like No Exit, I'm also going to recommend The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This is a book that is also isolated. It is set on this island. There's a lot of rain coming in. It's like really stormy. You have to take a boat to get out to the island. So they're like kind of stuck on this island and it's set during a wedding. So it's also a very short time span with a lot of people in a very closed, isolated location. When this book begins, you know that somebody dies, but you don't know who dies and who did it. And over the course of this book, you get to know a lot of different characters. You get a lot of different perspectives and you start to see a lot of different suspicious things going on. A lot of people have secrets. A lot of people have motives and you're just trying to figure out who done it. So I I think this one's a ton of fun. It has a very like classic Agatha Christie style vibe to it where you're in this isolated setting and there's all these people and you don't know who did it and you're just trying to figure it out and you're confused the whole time but you're also having a lot of fun. Next, I'm going to talk about The One by John Mars. This is also now a show on Netflix. So if you've seen that, you might be interested in this, especially I haven't actually gotten to watch the show yet, but I want to very, very soon because I really, really enjoyed this book. This is a sci-fi thriller that is set in a world where there is this DNA matching service that can match you to your soulmate. So it's sort of like a dating app meets like 23andMe. There's this whole philosophy that your DNA will perfectly be compatible with someone else's DNA and you have one soulmate and that's who you're going to meet. And and this book is so fun and so interesting. You get five different main characters perspective and it alternates through all of them. The chapters are super short and each one ends with a cliffhanger. So you're reading like perspective one and it cliffhangs and then you move on to the next perspective and you have to get through five more perspectives before you get back to that story that you were so super excited for. And each chapter is like that. Each chapter ends with a cliffhanger. So you're constantly just like, I cannot stop reading this. I want to get back to that character. I want to get back to that character. I want to get back to that character because they all have such interesting stories. You get the perspective of the woman who like created this DNA matching service. You get the perspective of a serial killer. You get the perspective of a man who is married to a woman but then finds out his soulmate is a different man. It's just a lot of fun. 
I'll stick on the sci-fi thread and we can talk about Behind Our Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. So I know this book came out a really long time ago, many, many years ago, but I didn't get around to reading it until this year because there was a show coming out on Netflix similar to the one. And so I was super interested in it because of that. And I'm so glad I read this because I ended up giving this book five stars. It was so fun. When this book first came out, it was marketed with like a hashtag, like WTF that ending, something like that, because the ending in this was said to be so unpredictable, so crazy, such a big plot twist and it was. I admittedly had the ending a little bit spoiled for me before because it's just been out for years so I ended up seeing some things about the ending but even with that little nugget of information I had I still had so much fun with this book. It still blew my mind at the end. It was crazy. So the setup of this book it seems like a normal domestic thriller. You follow this main character, this woman who has this night at a bar where she meets this man. They really hit it off. They kiss and then he kind of runs away and then the next day she goes into work and realizes that he is her new boss. She works at a psychiatrist's office. She's like the office admin person and they were having a new doctor come into the office and so that was him and now he is her boss and so that's really awkward and then she ends up running into his wife and then they sort of strike up a friendship and she just gets way too close and entangled in their marriage. So it sounds normal, right? It sounds like just your average domestic thriller, but it's not. There are some crazy, crazy, crazy things that go on in this book. And just knowing that is what kept me so engaged in it because I knew the ending was crazy. Like I said, this has like a sci-fi element. It's not your normal average thriller. So if you know that, I think you'll be really, really engaged in the story. You won't be able to stop reading. You're gonna know what is that ending? What could possibly be so crazy? And when you get there, it is really rewarding because it is something you would truly never expect. Speaking of endings you would never expect or even just plots you would never expect, I have to talk about Layla by Colleen Hoover. This one is one of the weirdest thrillers I've ever read. It is a romantic thriller because it's Colleen Hoover, of course, she's a romance author and she branched out to do this very, very strange story. Um, how do I explain this one? So in this story, you've got two characters. You have Leeds and Layla and they meet at like a wedding. They strike off a romance. They have a whirlwind romance for a couple months and then a tragic accident happens. Layla gets severely injured. She's in the hospital for a while trying to recover and Leeds wants to take her back to the place they first met back at that wedding venue. It's like a bed and breakfast. He wants to take her back there to try to have a romantic adventure and really help her feel more like herself because she hasn't really been herself since that tragic accident. While they're there, Layla starts acting super strange and then Leeds ends up striking a relationship with another guest named Willow. This is how the synopsis describes it. And he gets put in a very, very strange situation. And that's where I'm going to leave it. I don't want to tell you anything more about this book. It has paranormal elements. It is a wild adventure. You will want to keep reading to know what the heck is going on because you're not going to believe what ends up happening in this book. And I think Colleen Hoover's writing style is just so addictive anyway. Like you can't stop reading her books, even just her regular like contemporary romance books. I just think something about her writing style keeps you really engaged. And with this one, with all the weird things going on and you're just trying to figure it all out, you're not gonna be able to put this book down. I also have to talk about Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is the first sort of thriller adventure that she had off of her romance writing. And this one also just has that those same elements where you just wanna figure out what's going on. It just hooks you so much. There's just something about her writing that really keeps you hooked. So in Verity, you have this main character, Lowen, and she is a struggling writer. And then she gets this opportunity to go and be the ghost writer for this woman, Verity, who was like in the middle of this book series. And now she is like comatose. She's not gonna be able to finish the series. Her husband's been taking care of her. And so she's like, this is a great opportunity. I'm gonna get to go write this famous person's books. It's gonna be awesome. Gonna make a lot of money. Gonna be a good time. And then she gets there to their house. And her first thing she's doing is like sifting through all of Verity's notes that she has for all of her writing and she finds writing that is clearly not a book, uh, clearly not the book series, and is full of really dark confessions and secrets and admissions like diary entries from Verity's past and then Lowen gets put in the middle of it because she starts having feelings 
for Jeremy, the husband, and he sort of has feelings for her. And it's just this love triangle. Plus she knows all these things about Verity. She's like, do I tell the husband? Do I not? What's gonna happen? But it's some pretty serious information that he should know. And the stakes are just high. The tension is high. And oh my gosh, it's such a fun time. Highly recommend both this one and Layla for, especially if you are like a romance reader and you're just trying to pick up some thrillers, I think these are a good place to start. Next, I'm gonna talk about Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. So before I talk about this book, I will say it is very, very gory and gruesome and full of trigger warnings and content warnings. So it is not a book for everyone. It's pretty intense. So just be sure you look into that before picking this one up because it is, it's just not for everyone. This book is so, so engaging, so thrilling and so fast paced. It is like 500 pages. It's a pretty long book for a thriller. Oh no, it's not quite 500, it's like 400 pages, but still it's pretty long for a thriller. But I I still just could not stop reading this book because I just wanted to know what was going on. So this is a book that follows these two sisters who have been estranged for like the past 20 years. They had a third sister who went missing like 20 years ago and then they had like some conflict and then they've just been estranged ever since. But one of them, her husband gets murdered and that brings them back together. And there are seemingly connections between her husband's murder and their sister's disappearance 20 years ago that they are trying to figure out. And this book gets intense fast. It is like action packed. It's like watching an action thriller movie, like one of those Liam Neeson films. Like it's got that kind of intensity to it. And you just can't stop reading this one. I know I'm saying this about all the books, but it's just so true. You start reading it and you just have to know how it's gonna end. The stakes get so high. It is just such a crazy ride. There's some intense things going on. You really hate some characters by the end and you wanna watch your main characters get the vengeance that they deserve. And it is just so engaging. and such a fun ride very intense ride very gruesome subjects in here so like I said not for everyone but if it is this one is a lot of fun to fly through the next book I have to talk about is Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. This book is a ton of fun because it flips the script of the sort of traditional domestic thriller formula you see a lot. So a lot of domestic thrillers follow that sort of gone girl method of there's a husband and a wife, wife goes missing, husband seems to be the main suspect. But in this book, the husband goes missing and the wife is the main suspect. And also, you know, the wife killed him, but it's more intense because she's also confused because not only does she kill him, but his body is literally missing. And when she killed him, she set it up for his body to be found, you know, make it look like an accident or something, or like he intentionally took his own life. Now his body is literally nowhere to be found and she doesn't know what could have happened to it. She doesn't know, is he actually alive? Is there someone who was helping him? What's going on? She starts getting weird messages and then the cops start suspecting her and it's really, really intense. What I think is so fun about this book is you're either gonna love or hate the main character. You're either gonna side with her for killing her husband and be like, ooh, can she get away with it? Or you're gonna hate her and be like, ooh, can the cops finally catch her? And Either way, it's gonna be really fun because it's such an adventure. There's so much tension, the stakes are high. It's so mysterious. You don't know who to trust. It's going at such a fast pace. She's confused. Everyone's confused. You're confused. It's a good time. I will say there are parts of this that are a little cheesy, like the dialogue's a little cheesy and the ending, like, you know, the evil villain type speech thing that happens, like a little cheesy, but I still think it was a lot of fun. I don't really mind a cheesy thriller when I'm looking for a book to just fly through really quickly. So I think this is a good one if you're just looking for a really fast paced read. Next, I have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is one of the first thrillers I read that I felt so incredibly engaged in. This is probably one of the first thrillers I've ever read in like one day, in one sitting, for it to be like a full length novel. It was just so fun. There was something about Riley Sager's writing that just really hooks me as well. He just really has a nice pace to his books and it's just a really fun time. And he also always does the thing at the end where there's just twist upon twist upon twist and you don't know when you're actually getting the story. So I also think that's super fun. But this is a story about a woman who is low on her luck, low on her money, looking for an opportunity, finds this opportunity to do apartment sitting at this really pristine, like rich building in like New York. She's gonna get paid a lot of money just to apartment sit, so she goes. But when she goes there, there's a ton of rules, like you can't have guests, you can't have any photos, you can't talk to anyone else who lives there. I mean, she really can't leave it alone. Like she has to be there every night for as long as she's apartment sitting it. And then one of the girls in the building goes missing and then weird things start happening 
and she's trying to figure out how the heck to get out of there. So this is another one that's sort of like a closed room, like a closed door, isolated, locked room, locked door, whatever you call that mystery, that I also think just helps with keeping a book really fast paced because you're just trying to get a character out of the situation and just wondering if they're gonna be able to do it, who's gonna jump around the corner, and it's just a really fun ride. So definitely think this is Riley Sager's best book in my opinion. So if you're trying to start with Riley Sager, I think this is the best place to go. And last but not least is He Started It by Samantha Downing. This is a really fun road trip story that follows a couple of siblings who have an estranged relationship, but they're all coming together now because their grandfather has just died. He's left them behind a large fortune, but in order for them to claim their inheritance, he said in the will that they have to go on this road trip together, that they went on all together with their grandfather as children. And so in the beginning, you think like, oh, that's really sentimental. And he's like, I want to bring the siblings back together to go on this road trip that we took as kids with them so that they can reclaim their wealth that'll bring them together after I die. That's not really what's going on because you find out that road trip wasn't as sentimental and great as it seems and these siblings all sort of have secrets and motives and a history together and there's just some really fun plot reveals in this it is just so fun it's so twisty and unexpected and i think that road trip like having a destination really helps keep the pacing of the book really nice too because you know like there's an end goal there's a destination you know what to expect in sort of that timeline so it is just so so much fun i think the characters are also just so fun in this book because you kind of don't like any of them by the end of it and that's just super fun also sorry if you hear my dog panting over there he just got back from a run so he is <laughs> just being very loud. <laughs> but luckily this was the last book anyway, so we can just wrap it up. So these are all of my top 10 thriller recommendations. If you are in a slump, if you want to find a really engaging thriller that you can go through really quickly, I highly recommend all of these books. They all have different vibes and themes to them, but they're all so, so fun, so fast paced, and I promise you will not be able to put them down. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books and if you love them too, and if you have any additional recommendations for really fun fast-paced thrillers absolutely leave those down in the comments below too because i'm always looking for more to get me out of my slumpy reading moods but that is it for me thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye